Maria Bartiromo, Tyler Matheson have got you covered. Thank you, Dylan. And there's a live picture of the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. The market's fractionally lower as we enter the final and most important hour of the trading day. With the July rally behind us, investors gear up for August. I've got a feeling next week you're going to see a bit of an explosion. Will next month be even hotter? Plus, is yellow the new green? The CEO of the trucking and shipping giant joins us live to talk about expanding overseas, the transport sector, and the company's blockbuster earnings. And the Senate Majority Leader makes a major move on stem cell stocks. It isn't just a matter of faith. It's a matter of science. The sector is reacting. The final and most important hour of the trading day is underway as we count you down to the closing bell. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Closing Bell. I'm Maria Bartiromo. I'm Tyler Matheson. Thanks very much for joining us. Here are the stories Wall Street is talking about at this hour. Stocks connected to stem cell research are moving higher after Senate Leader Frist calls for... Where'd I go there? Calls for <laughs> stepped-up funding. Yeah, I, I can move over here if you want me there. Calls uh, for a higher funding of that uh, important initiative. Oil, gas, and coal companies set to benefit now after Congress clears the $12 billion energy bill, the first major overhaul of energy policy in some 13 years years and uh, stocks are slumping as you see there as oil is jumping back above $60 a barrel and economic growth slows to a 3.4 percent annualized rate. Let's take a look at the Dow Industrials. It has been a very very good month of July one of the best in many years I believe for the Dow since 97. Right now though down 22 and a half points. Uh, Nasdaq down about seven and a half uh, about one third of one percent at 2190 uh, and change. As for the S&P 500 it is down four and a half 12 30 916. Well, in this final hour of the final trading day for July, let us see now what is moving the individual stocks that are jumping today. Joe Kernan. Uh, Tyler, I was, uh, I was thinking like you were about these averages, about what July was like, because I believe uh, next week we will be in August. So let's quickly take a look at where we've come, because I've been talking about these averages all week long and kind of the on this show, Tyler? <laughs> this is it. Later in the day, I'll, uh, yeah, a, a tearful farewell will be said here. Joe, thank you. I, I will, uh, I'll see a lot more of you, buddy. Okay, buddy. <laughs> All right, good. Aww. Congrats. We'll I talk know, about it, is, it later. It is sad. <laughs> it is very sad. It's very sad. Uh, Seven Nile. years, Tyler and I have been but a couple of good things years. ahead for all of us, uh, I hope. Well, we've had a hot July on Wall Street, meantime, with new multi-year highs on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. As Joe noted, some think it's even going to get hotter before the summer's over. This is the best single month performance for the Dow and the S&P since December of 2003. This morning, Jack Berugian of Brewer Cero Financial. Following a Maria developing story out west concerning Hewlett Packard and Apple, the Coombs is at the NASDAQ market site. But first, Bob Pisani, New York Stock Exchange. Hey, Bob. We're ending the month of July. All right, a bit on a down note, but really it's for the right reasons because the economy is looking very good. GDP numbers were strong, a bit weaker than expected, but don't worry about that. Bottom line is if you look under the hood a little bit, those numbers were quite good. Take a look at the markets in the last hour. And because the numbers were pretty good, if you look under the hood of the GDP numbers, there's a two little problems that are occurring today. First, we have higher interest rate concerns on those consistently strong economic stats. And secondly, end of the month. We had a very good month. A lot of hedge funds have made good money this month. A lot of them want to take a little bit of profits right now. That's not unusual. And the markets have been a little bit on the downside as the interest rate concerns have moved the bond yields up a bit. Take a look at the story in July. The bottom line is very simple. For the month of July, we've had very good economic numbers, almost, almost consistently excellent economic numbers. That's the major driver of the markets here. Second quarter's ending very soon. We're at the high end of the earnings that we got. As far as the third quarter, the guidance has been in line. That's good, good enough to keep the markets together and moving up here. Let's take a look at the major sectors. What moved? Broad breadth. Broad stocks were moving this month, but one particular group really helped a lot. And you know what it is. Technology stocks were up 6% as a group, and this is both the NASDAQ and the NYSE stocks, and they love it when techs are moving. Look at the financials right on the bottom. They're one of the lower level performers this month. That's a bit of a drag, but the fact that techs have been so strong really helped a lot of people. And retailer, we're doing very good. We don't have any real retail numbers in, but we have some very good guidance so far. Just take a look at Bank of America. You'll see down 3%. I think Joe mentioned Citigroup earlier. All the big money center banks have been weak. Morgan, Bank of America, all of them have been to the weak side this month on flattening yield curve concerns. Let's go over to Bertha. She's standing by at the NASDAQ. 
Bob, you know, over the last couple of days, we've seen the shorts get squeezed in the afternoon. Looks like they may have their way, but we still got some time to go. And that big rise in technology, 6% move in the NASDAQ this month, really fueled by internet and chip stocks. Today, they're giving back. Internet stocks right now down about 1% a little bit. Chip stocks are just modestly positive. And the big movers in that space, because a lot of folks expect that there's going to be a lot of movement there. And we're seeing it in terms of a fight over talent. Microsoft and Google are fighting it out over Microsoft's former VP of search technology, Dr. Kai Fu Lee. Microsoft winning an injunction against Google saying, hey, he cannot start and do a lot of proprietary stuff for them in China just yet. Yahoo has gone ahead and hired the former uh, IBM researcher to head its research initiative. This is one of the areas that those internet firms are really watching. Overall today, the earnings help propel a number of stock to new highs. Take a look at some of the winners today, MicroStrategy and Business Objects, uh, I2. Those are software companies that all hit new highs on better than expected results, raising their guidance. You also had Whole Food Markets as well, putting in a pretty strong quarter. And the NASDAQ, which is listed on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, of course, not only beat expectations, but raised its guidance. Maria Tyler, back Hi. to you. Bertha, thank you. Bertha Coombs. The market under pressure today, but it's been a hot week, a hot month. The Dow down 37. NASDAQ right now off 10 points. Straight ahead, one of the most powerful men in Washington makes a big move when it comes to stem cell research. I believe we will have the opportunity to save many lives and make countless others' lives more fulfilling. And that, that statement right there, has the sector moving. Just look at shares of Stem Cells Incorporated right now. More on that next. But first, here's where the action is on the street. The most heavily traded stocks at the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. Motorola, usually not on that list. It's number one today. This seat. Welcome back, everybody. There's a live picture of the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on a Friday afternoon on Wall Street. The market closes in 45 minutes, and the Dow is down 38 points. NASDAQ off 10 and 3 quarters. For all of the up-to-the-minute market dispatches... ...in which the family is so heavily involved, I think of Ace Greenberg... Uh, not Ace Greenberg, Hank Greenberg and his family, his sons, long uh, at AIG. It's sometimes very difficult for families to pass on uh, the, uh, the, the corporation. It's true, and you know... Specifically in media, you mm -hmm. find really yeah. family-owned businesses, right? Uh, when you look Redstone, at Comcast, right? you look at Viacom, um, you look at, oh, God, the Regas yeah. family, right? Yeah. So it, it, you have a lot of families running the media companies. For better or worse. All right, uh, let's tell you it's uh, 321 in the east. That leaves us with 38 minutes of trading time left to go. Crude oil higher, the Dow lower by 46, and NASDAQ off by 11. Next up, we're talking dollars and cents, a different way to look at currencies. Trading dollars with cents when the closing bell comes back. Watching CNBC on the money. Well, it has been a hot July on Wall Street with big gains across many of the major indices. In today's closing bell poll, we are asking you, will August be even hotter? What do you think? Go to our website, cbc.com on MSN, cast your vote. We'll bring you the results later on in the program. Meanwhile, on Wall Street today, down today, fractional moves, 48 points lower on the Dow and about 12 lower on NASDAQ. Russell 2000 hit an all-time high yesterday in just a few minutes. A small cap manager who has driven his fund to 23% annual gains over the past three years. He'll be our guest. Still ahead, yellow makes green, and a lot of it. The CEO of the trucking and shipping giant is our guest, live, next. And you might not have to wait for holiday sales to buy that LCD television set. Prices are falling. And what about the stocks behind those companies? This is The Closing Bell on CNBC. When you go the Dow off 56 at 10,649, let's take a look at how the markets are shaping up uh, right now or shaping down as we finish what, by any reckoning, has been a very strong month for most of the major market barometers. The Dow Industrials, however, down about a half percent today at 10,649. NASDAQ off 13 and a half now as those losses uh, steepen here uh, ever so slightly in the last hour of the trading day. I wonder we call it the most important. And there is the S&P. At 3 o'clock, sort of uh, diving off a cliff uh, at 1235, 13 off eight points. That's only about two thirds of 1%. Well, the Dow transports are moving at 51, NASDAQ down 
by 12 and two thirds. Get ready for some small talk. The Russell 2000 index on fire. It hit an all time high yesterday. A top small cap manager is with us giving us his favorite stocks next. And if you're waiting for that big sale before you buy a new television, we'll give you the lowdown on falling prices of LCD TVs and talk about the stocks that could get a pop because of it. Five and a half minutes of trading time left to go. Crude oil up, the Dow down uh, 59 points. NASDAQ off by 13 again with five and a half minutes to go. Joining us today for our closing countdown, Ralph Acampora. He's director of technical research at Prudential Equity Group. Our uh, market reporters will join us in just a minute. But first, the Dow Jones transports, Ralph, have had quite a run this month, up about nine. We'll also be joined by Bertha Coombs at NASDAQ. Bob, thought, well, question? You, you, you know, that's what strikes me, Ralph. There is no signs of technical deterioration in the market at all. You look at the uh, advanced decline line. You look at the new highs uh, we're hitting. You look at the any kind of relative strength index. You look at the breadth you just mentioned. Right across the the board we're strong here the only the only thing that I find interesting is the bulls are insisting that the growth part the big cap growth stocks are going to outperform so far they've been wrong but they keep praying for it to happen any thoughts on that yeah well you, you make an interesting point it's growth that matters and now it's started to be mid cap growth small cap growth and large cap growth but I think the breadth is telling us that everything is going to go up. Yep. So who cares if it's led by large cap? You almost don't have to worry about what you're picking. If you look at the uh, 10 sectors of the S&P 500, all 10 of them are up. And all, all of them are up about 2% uh, or more. The utilities are the lowest one. But the energy group, the transports, the industrials, all of them, 5 6 7%. Yes. Bertha Coombs? OK, I don't want to be a party pooper here. But when everybody starts talking like this, when you get the Michael Metz of the world all getting on board, and saying things are going up, it just makes me scratch my head. And I wonder, because the thing everybody said was really going to drive the market was when the Fed finally closes up shop for a while and stops raising interest rates. Have we already expended that rally, do you think, Ralph? Or no. is that going to give us the next leg up? You know, it's very interesting that we talk about so many people being bullish. I don't hear that. I honestly don't hear that with my clients. These are very large institutional portfolio people. They are very tentative at best. So uh, I don't think it's over. I really don't. Are there any technical uh, signs, uh, Ralph, that seem to be flashing warning signs to you? Um, I, I think. I mean, even weak, even faintly. Yeah, well, even faintly would be volume. There is uh, not that much volume on the up days. Although you have more upside than downside volume, you would like to see volume in excess of 1.5 billion. You'd like to see 1.7 or 8. Yeah. I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Hey, hey, Ralph, so many things worked in the month of August. The, the right trades, as you might say, uh, were to, would certainly have been to buy techs and cyclicals at least. What's going to be the right trade in August? For example, should people be shorting the bond and going long the markets, the stock market? Uh, yeah, I think, I think we're starting to see another little hint today that the uh, interest rates want to go a little higher. So I think you play that part of the market. And what about so. China? I mean, so far, China hasn't made any moves uh, since that announcement that they're going to let the yuan float a bit. But do you think they might actually let it float a little more and let it let it move a little higher? Um, I don't think they'll do that right away. But the first step is an indication that they're headed in that direction. And I think that's probably the message that we should take. All right, Ralph, thanks very much, uh, Bob, and uh, Bertha, thank you as well. And now, starting Monday, folks, I will have a new job at CNBC as the managing editor of CNBC Business News, a job I sought and am very eager to start. Uh, it will mean, however, that I won't be here with you or with my partner and friend, Maria Bartiroma. I will miss that. I will not disappear, but I will not be here on a regular basis. I will miss all of you. Thank you for watching. Now, let's move to the Reserve Officers Association, which is ringing the closing bell. Uh, down at uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange over at NASDAQ. It is the Advanced Life Services Holdings Incorporated. Thanks very much, everybody. The second hour of the closing bell continues uh, in 15 seconds with Maria Bartiromo. I'll see you on the Round the Neighborhood.
from the world leader in business news. This is The Closing Bell, live at CNBC's global headquarters, Maria Bartiromo. Another hot day in New York as July comes to a close. The temperature right now is 82 degrees. Not quite the 90 plus we've been seeing in recent days, but plenty hot. And while stocks on Wall Street also cooled a bit today, it's still been a very hot July for them too. Good afternoon, everybody. Today on The Closing Bell, all of that. But first, my thanks to my wonderful friend and colleague, Tyler Matheson. I'll be seeing you in the newsroom, Tyler. Thanks so much, and we'll see you later. Tyler Matheson. Uh, we'll look at what drove stocks higher this month and whether the summer rally will continue next month. Also today on The Bell, the man who could be the next chairman of the Federal Reserve is with us. I'll be speaking live with the top economist at the White House, Ben Bernanke. I want to know what he thinks is the most important problem facing the U.S. economy right now. Plus, Rupert Murdoch's son, Lachlan, was the prince in line for the News Corporation's throne. Today, he suddenly stepped aside. Is there trouble in the family kingdom? A key supplier for the Apple iPod plunges today in a revenue warning, and the company's high-profile reselling deal with Hewlett Packard comes apart. Early signs of trouble for the red-hot digital music player we explore. And we'll take you for a ride with the Silicon Valley CEO who's...